Hi, this is Josh, your EdTech Spec, and today we're going to be talking about sharing calendars with others in the new Google Calendar. Um, so one of the great things about Google Calendar is how easy it is to have uh, visibility on your things and your events and meetings in your calendar, as well as those with others in their calendars. So here we are in Google Calendars, and here are my calendars, and then here are other calendars. Um, of people who've shared theirs with me. Now, if something's in my calendars, it means I can edit that calendar or I can add events or delete events to it. So this is my calendar here in, um, in green, and you can see I have some other things. Um, so there's a couple ways to get there, but the fastest way to get into our sharing settings is to hover over, and you see um, things don't appear until we hover over them and go to the... Um, three dots, which is one of Google's symbols for settings. And when we click on that, we're gonna get into, this is where we would change colors and such. Uh, but what we're going to get into is settings and sharing. And what this will do is bring up the settings for just this calendar. And we're gonna talk specifically about sharing. Now there's two kinds of sharing. Um, especially if you are in a Google domain, which we here in the Alsall Union School District are. So for starters, um, People can just, let's head back for a second um, to here. So if we get rid of these and we scroll down, we can actually come up here and say, add a coworker's um, calendar. So if I type in a coworker's name, depending on how they have set their access permissions, which is like sharing, I will be able to get it or they will just get an email requesting that I do that. So let's talk about access permissions uh, first. Whoops. So again, we're going to, we would click the three dots here and then go to settings and sharing. Now, um, here we are. So you have access, here's sort of a table of contents. So we're gonna go to access permissions. If I click on that, just brings it up to the top. So right now, if, anyone within our school district requests my calendar, they can automatically load it, but they will only see if I am free or busy. It hides details. Because I've, if I turn that off, then only the people I've specifically shared it with, and they will have to request it. But I like to keep mine turned on so people can use it. This will also uh, later help us when we want to use the find a time feature. Um, now, if for some reason, say I'm doing a school events calendar or a district events calendar, and I'm going to embed that in a web page or make it available to the public, I would check this box as well. I get this warning, making your calendar public will make the event visible to the world, including via Google search. So if I said, okay, then in both of these, I have a couple choices. So I have free, see only free and busy or see event details. If we're making something public, we probably want people to have all the details. So we would click that and that's why it's the default. So here I have the same choices, make available in the district, free and busy or all event details. I'm gonna leave that to just free and busy. Now the other kind of sharing we wanna do is to share with specific people. So when I click that here, it brings that and you can see this calendar is already shared with certain people and it's already shared at certain different levels. So for most part, people can see event details. You'll see this one, which is one of my other accounts, can make changes to events. So let's see how we do that. We're going to click on Add People. And then let's say I'm going to share this with the EdTech Department account. So I'm going to click that. Now I have to pick what level of permissions they have. Um, if I wanted to, I could add another um, email just by typing it but we're gonna, just gonna do one at a time right now. So if you have four people to share with, you only have to do this once, you just keep typing the emails. So now we have their permissions level and there are basically four permission levels. The most restricted is see only free busy. They'll just see that there's a block and you have time soaked up and they can't see what it is. All event details, they'll see the times, they'll see the name of the meeting, um, who's invited, where it is, all those sorts of things. Make changes to events, allow someone else to add things to my calendar, to write on to my calendar and make appointments for me. Um, if you are managing your supervisor or your manager's calendar, this might be a good set, setting for you to have. But really, if you're managing someone else's ca calendar 
um, you need them to give you this permission. Or in other words, if I had a secretary and I needed her to be able to create things on my calendar and then invite people and then share my calendar, then I would give this is near pretty much full access. Make changes and manage sharing. If you give somebody make changes here, they can just add things to your calendar. They can invite people, et cetera, et cetera. If you give them make changes and manage sharing, they can add to your calendar, they can invite people. But then if someone else says, oh, I need that person's calendar, if I have managed sharing, I can share the calendar with these level of permission again. So right now I'm gonna give this person make changes, then I'm gonna click send. Now, this email address will get an email saying that I've shared my calendar with them with permissions. If I decide later on I wanna change it, all I have to do is come in here and change the permissions. And I can change them up or I can change them down and it's really uh, not a problem whatsoever. And that really is, and when we're done, we click the arrow to go back to our calendar. And that really is how simple it is to, um, to share your calendar with either the whole organization or just an individual person, and how if you need to manage your supervisor or your manager's calendar, what sort of permissions they need to give you, or if you are delegating your calendar to somebody else, what sort of permissions you need to give them. Hopefully that's given you everything you need to know on sharing Google Calendars and the new Google Calendar, and happy Googling.